Well, good evening. I want to welcome you tonight uh, to the Savior's Cross Ministries broadcast. It's so good to have you joining us. And I want to remind you the purpose of this broadcast and this ministry is to share the message of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And all of the things that we deal with in life uh, is applicable, certainly, to Jesus Christ and His finished work on the cross. Uh, we would invite you to go to our Facebook page, uh, the Savior's Cross Ministries broadcast. Like it if you if you would, and share it, and possibly even uh, recommend it to one of your friends. Uh, you can also find us on our brand new YouTube channel, uh, the Savior's Cross Ministries, uh, and also you can contact us at Savior's Cross Ministries at gmail.com. And I want to welcome uh, our panel tonight. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome uh, Brother Eric Griffin uh, from Crowder's Chapel, not only my brother in Christ. Uh, he may not want me to, to say this in public, but he's actually my cousin, and I love him and I appreciate him. Brother Eric, tell us what's going on in your neck of the woods. Of course, I pastor Crowder's Chapel. We're uh, a growing and thriving ministry right at the base of Crowder's Mountain. We are currently, uh, like every other church, fighting the COVID right. uh, epidemic, and we're still trying to be the body of Christ, reaching out and touching and Amen. Uh, food ministry and stuff like that still running. So we're just trying very hard to uh, to make sure that we're still being the body like we're supposed to be during this time. So that's Amen. who we are. Amen. Praise the Lord. Eric, qu quickly, tell us about a couple of the ministries, especially your thrift store. It seems to be an exciting ministry that you guys are doing uh, on this side of Gaston. On Archie Whiteside Road, uh, we have a little thrift store, and uh, it was just like God laid it on my heart. And a lot of other ministers, they kind of got a little upset with me and thought, you know, well, he's just trying to boost the, you know, the funding of the church. And actually what we do with that is we receive donations, and everything that comes in, goes right back to the community we buy medication food things like that for those that are and uh, that's all awesome. yeah one of, one of the things i'd like to tell you is sure we put a little one of the rooms in the thrift store we converted into a prayer room and we have more people coming in asking for prayer than we do really any of the rest of the things that go on in that building it's just a phenomenal thing of what god's doing there amen praise the lord amen praise the lord on my left i want to welcome uh preacher jamie ellis uh, from Kings Mountain, North Carolina, uh, preacher. It's good to have you. Good to be here. And uh, tell the people there was one of the one thing uh, I'd like to throw out there, maybe as a surprise even to you, uh, and you could say yeah or nay. But tell them a little bit about yourself, brother Jamie, and also uh, the possibility of being available for some meetings. Yes, sir. Well, I I pastored for twenty years. I'm not <coughs> pastoring now, but um, I do. Uh, thank the Lord for what God is doing with this particular broadcast. This was a door that uh, God laid upon Brother Jeff and my heart as well. We, it was a timing thing. We had been praying about it for quite some time. And, and uh, during all this that we're going through as a country and, you know, our churches are going through, we're, and you hear the phrase, we're in, we're in this together. We're, yes. All of us are in this yes. together. And... Um, it just seemed like the timing was right, Brother Jeff, for us to come together for such a time as this that we're going through. And uh, I, I realize that the, the need uh, for God's people uh, is, is great in the sense of hope. Yes, uh, yes. God's people need hope in a time Amen. like this. And we, uh, we have a sense of desperation in our heart. I do, and I know Brother Jeff does. And I'm sure our pastor here does uh, to reach out to people yes. uh, like yourself, people tonight who are watching. And we're hoping that we can uh, make a difference in, in this particular time. And uh, in fact, Jude says, and of some having compassion, making a difference. Amen. That's where God wants us to be. And as Brother Jeff mentioned, I mean, I'm available for whatever. If God opens up a door somewhere, I'm available uh, to come and uh, speak and preach the message of the cross and whatever the Lord lays upon someone's heart. But I want to say, I want to mention in particular, as we mentioned last week, 
concerning our, our ministry, it's a ministry that my um, son-in-law has taken up. It's called the Word of Life Broadcast. Amen. And it airs on uh, Thursday nights at 7.30. We had been doing it on Wednesday nights since our church had not been having Wednesday night services, but we changed it to give us some uh, flexibility that we might you know, be able to participate in other churches uh, during this time and to try to help some other brothers in Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I am Jeff Williams, uh, pastor here at West Franklin Baptist Church. And uh, guys, just feel free to, to jump in. Uh, the Lord had, had laid on my heart last week uh, to deal with the subject uh, tonight uh, with the Lord's help on forgiveness. And I, I guess I should say biblical forgiveness. Now, one of the greatest benefits uh, in coming to Christ and having a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is the assurance that our sins have been forgiven. Uh, but gentlemen, I believe, uh, and I'm going to have you weigh in on this, uh, I believe there are thousands of Christians out there that struggle with the issue of forgiveness uh, in one way or the other. Uh, I know that a lot of us, uh, we, we believe that the Lord has forgiven us of our sins uh, due to his vicarious death on, on the cross, his death, burial, and resurrection. But I also understand, and I'm a recipient of it myself, is uh, that old deceiver uh, called Satan himself in Revelation chapter 12 tells us that he is constantly accusing us. And I believe that uh, all, all of us at times that are trying to live for the Lord uh, are being accused by uh, Satan himself. And, and um, I want to, to, to jump right into this subject now. Uh, guys, there's, there's three avenues that we can talk about tonight that uh, if, if the Lord please. Uh, one is dealing with the issue of forgiving ourselves. And number two is the issue of forgiving someone that has wronged you or I in the past. And number three, the issue of forgiving a Christian that has failed God. And I, I want to say this to, to launch the conversation. For, for us not to understand biblical forgiveness, uh, I believe, uh, men, that it would, it, would, it would stand to reason that we do not understand the cross of Calvary. God wants us to know that he sent his son uh, to, to die on Calvary's cross to, to, to give us the forgiveness of sin. So uh, I, would, I would throw the question out there and one of you just, just take right up with it. Do, do you agree that there are Christians, let's keep it in this vein for a few moments. Do you believe that there are Christians that are struggling even though they're born again and they love God that are struggling with their past? Without a doubt, um, I think one of the one of the biggest problems is uh, when we think about forgiveness, uh, we can't help but to think about unforgiveness, an unforgiving spirit. I think this is a plague that is within our churches. A lot of people. It's not in every church, you know, as more predominant in uh, certain churches. But unforgiveness, it's been said, is probably one of the, if not the worst sin uh, that lies within the bedrock of the church of, of today. And uh, we're living in a time where God has given us an opportunity at this particular time. I think this is much more than a wake-up call. It's a call to repentance. We're living in a moment where God's people, God is dealing with his people to come back in repentance and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. So there must be repentance, uh, Brother Jeff, in order for that forgiveness. And when I say repentance, we, we also live in a time where uh, this there's a lot of debate about do we need to exercise repentance? Well, repentance is a gift. It's a gift that God gave us when we were birthed into his family. And although we have repented, 
once we're born into God's family, we need to continue to exercise that gift of repentance. I know we're talking about forgiveness, but there are these words we have to deal with in order to understand forgiveness. In fact, I want to read one verse of scripture, uh, Brother Jeff, and I think this is probably the foundation uh, of forgiveness as it relates to God forgiving us. Uh, here in uh, 1 Peter chapter number 3 and verse number 18, the Bible says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. This is a foundational verse as it regards forgiveness and in relation uh, to God and ourselves. God forgiven me. I, I need to understand that. I've always said this through the years, Brother Jeff. Um, only the forgiven can forgive. Right. Uh, God's people, we need to live in that particular vein of walking in the forgiveness that God has given or extended to us. And when we have been forgiven, then we are able to forgive others. No matter what it is, God wants us to live in that vein. Walking in forgiveness. And I think there's a couple of words, and I want to point these out, um, Brother Jeff. We, and I, I was sharing with Brother Jeff today, there's the word guilt. We've got guilt and bitterness. And bitterness is, is a cancer within our churches. It's cancer. But guilt is a prison. When people are ridden with guilt, we're in prison. Not only... I mean, we're in prison to ourselves in, in that respect, but we're also, if we have bitterness in our hearts one toward another, brother, we, it's a cancer. It's poison, and we have to deal with that. And the only way to deal with that is the cross. Amen. The cross is the means, and Christ is the object, being the object of our faith, and the power of what he did in his redemptive work on the cross enables us to live in a constant state of forgiveness. I mean, I've got to, I, I must uh, learn how to forgive. This is, this is one of the things, for instance, and I'll give it to someone else, one of you guys here in just a moment, but for instance, or for example, a lot of times we'll go to a brother or sister in Christ in our church and we'll say, if I've offended you, if I have done something uh, that I shouldn't have done, uh, I want to apologize for that. Well, that's not forgiveness. That, that's, a, that's an apology. Uh, I don't need an apology. I need forgiveness. And for the person who might come to me and say, well, brother, I want you to forgive me. A lot of times they'll say, well, that's okay. It's okay. Don't, don't worry about it. Am I forgiving that brother or sister? No, that's not forgiveness. I, if they are humble enough to come and say to me, brother Jeff, if someone says, hey, I want you to forgive me, I owe it to that person to say, I forgive you. I mean, I, that's, that's a part of our Christian makeup. If you're a born-again believer, if, if you're a new creation in Christ, then we, we must learn how to walk in forgiveness. Amen. Amen. Brother Ed? You know, the original thing that you asked was about, is there someone who just really can't forgive themselves or they're struggling with, you know, a past of something that's, you know, went on. And the reality is that the accuser, Satan, will always be there to accuse you. He will constantly bring up your past because that's what he's been trained to do. That's what he knows to do. And he will constantly, you know, pull that past back at you. The question becomes if we really believe the scriptures because it's like scriptures like 1 John um, 2 and 2 that says that Jesus is the atonement for our sin. He is the one who forgave us. And if he forgives us, the king of all kings, lord of all lords forgives us, then we have to realize we need to forgive ourselves. And when the enemy projects our past, we need to remind him that we don't live there anymore. Amen. That I'm not stuck where I was, that Jesus paid the price for it. I believe it. His word says it. It's settled. So I'm going to not, I'm not going to allow him to continue to accuse me of something I've already been forgiven for. It'd be like a creditor coming back at you and saying, you paid off your truck, but I'm going to keep sending you a bill for it. 
Right. How long are you going to let that happen? Amen. You're not. Right. You're going to show him the receipt. I can take the devil and show him the receipt that should be. Amen. Amen. So Amen. that's where I, you know, because I, I, everybody, the devil, I'm sure he does you, and I'm sure he does you. We all have a past, but thank God I'm not stuck in the past. I'm with the present with him. And the other thing is, I believe with all my heart, pastors, that God is trying a lot harder to get us into heaven than to get us out. Amen. So we have to realize that God is working so hard on our behalf. And if the blood's been applied, I've done what the scripture says. I've repented. I've called upon the name of the Lord. I've confessed. Yes. It's said. Amen. My name's in the Lamb's Book of Life, Amen. whether the devil likes it or not. Amen. 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 That's good. Praise the Lord. I'm loving this. Let's, let's look at something because, uh, uh, gentlemen, you'd be surprised that folks that may be watching or tuning in that does not per se have a have a church life so i want to ask you a question uh in to, concerning forgiveness uh, can a person can a person ask god to forgive them can any person ask god to forgive them of any sin and not know and that person not know the lord jesus christ in other words, what I'm saying is, can 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 anyone anywhere just simply say, God, forgive me, and that sin be forgiven, and that person not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ? Can they do it? Can they? They do it every Sunday. <laughs> but, if, but if you don't have that relationship with him, if you don't, I mean, you, the, the, the basics of repentance is you have to believe on him. You know, if you don't have the belief, then I could ask the Easter Bunny to forgive me. It <laughs> right. doesn't matter. I have to. I have to have a relationship. I have to know Him. I have. To, this is personal. Everybody can confess, but it takes that personal relationship, that knowing and just believing. You have to believe here. It's faith. It's faith. You have to believe. Amen. I, I, what I really, really am reaching for is the possibility that there's some out there that don't know the Lord, right. that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ. And maybe, maybe they are struggling with maybe even a, a, a sin that has been bound even at this moment. But maybe it is a past sin or whatever the case. My, what I'm really reaching for is can sins be forgiven without being born again? got to have the blood. Okay, expound on that a little bit for us. Just a well, second. In, in Ephesians 1, 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Uh, that's also another foundational uh, scripture in the word of God. I mean, without being birthed into God's family experience and, and being a recipient of the grace of God, then that sin is it's still there. It lies at the door. Yes. There's no possibility of that sin being forgiven. Without the blood, there is no remission. Amen. Absolutely none. So, so the atoning work or the work of the Lord Jesus Christ, his death on the cross, in that bearing the sins of the world, that faith in him, Faith in his vicarious work is what allows us access to the Father in, in, in the first place that would allow us to even repent or confess to, to the Father for anything that's going on in our life. The Bible says in 1 John 1, starting at verse number 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And this is what I like. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, I like this. We have to leave this. We have to say this also in verse 8. The Bible says, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But the Bible says, as 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 
and keeping our conversation uh, as we gear this ministry toward the message of the cross, as we gear this message towards Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That is one of the reasons that I wanted to bring this up because anything that the person needs lost or saved, anything that anyone needs is found in the Lord Jesus Christ is found in his finished work. And uh, for, for someone uh, to be, to, to bear this guilt, uh, to bear this guilt of, of sin uh, is a, as, as you alluded to, Brother Jamie, it's a, it's a tremendous load. It's a tremendous burden to bear. Uh, but to, to look at the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ and to look at the value of the Son of God and Him giving Himself as a ransom for our sin and looking at the value of His vicarious sacrifice. I love that word, His sacrifice, Him being the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Him being the one where John said, Behold the Lamb. Him being the Paschal Lamb is, is, is the reason and only reason and only means by which you and I can obtain forgiveness. And the Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 36, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. So I don't know, I'm, I'm excited about that gentleman. Brother Eric, what do you say about uh, as, as we go along? I just, the reality is if we confess, we believe, then we're set free. Amen. And, and I don't have to be bound by those chains of the past. Sometimes I wonder, though, Pastor, if we got folks that don't confess at all. Right. You know, we, we have that deep, hidden, dark place that maybe we're just afraid to confess that before the Lord. Um, I've watched, I've been in ministry a long time, and I've watched the little things come back and get them when... You know, they, they were doing such a great thing, and then that one unconfessed sin come back and, and grab them. I, a lot of times I believe we need to make sure that everything is confessed before the Lord. It doesn't mean I have to confess it before you. Right. It just means I have to confess it before him because I, there's a place in Proverbs that says, whoever conceals their sins does not prosper. We need to make sure that we are, are, are not afraid or ashamed of our past because it's under the blood. Mm -hmm. It's been taken care of. It's been atoned for. It's been paid for. So don't let the enemy beat you up. If you've confessed that thing before God, don't let it keep coming back at you and, and nibbling at you. Because, like you said, he who the Son sets free is absolutely free indeed. Amen. We're free. Praise the Lord. Brother Jamie. Well, we, um, when we think about forgiveness, uh, you know, the, the word justification comes to my mind, and I can't help but think about it. We're justified by his grace. We're justified by faith. And we're justified by blood, according to the scriptures. And so in, in three particular aspects, God has justified us, declared us righteous in his very sight. And I mean, we stand right in the midst of God's amazing grace. And this is something that needs to continue. When we talk about confession, there, there are certain uh, groups out there mention or try to name anybody but I will say this there are those who think that we don't have to confess anymore and uh, but I will say if that's the case why did God inspire John the beloved to, to, to say or to pin down to the churches for the churches uh, the verses that brother Jeff has already read if we walk in the light as he is in the light we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus sin and then that verse 9 again and uh, I mean you can't uh, repetition is a wonderful thing you, you can't overemphasize this yes. if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness wow. uh, all unrighteousness I mean everything that we do against God God we can walk in that forgiveness in a perpetual way I mean, if you've ever experienced uh, the lifting of the load, I, I guess that's a, uh, probably the best way I can put it. I didn't really understand all that God was doing, but I, I 
realize looking back 30, near 32 years ago when God birthed me into his family that as our brother has already said, our brother Eric has said tonight that God is after us. He's after us to forgive us. The Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. He right. is in pursuit. He's pursuing us. He pursued me. He pursued you, Brother Jeff. And he overtook us in the sense of, of dealing with us. The, the mighty spirit of the living God convicted us of, of sin and of righteousness and of judgment and drew us to the cross, the place and the only place of forgiveness. There's yes. nowhere else to go. Yes. Nowhere else to turn. Amen. Amen. What, what do we say, Brother Eric, to the person out there? And again, this may be a little bit repetitive, but, but I believe it's worth looking at again. What do we say to the person that may be listening that says, Brother Eric, you just don't know what I've done. You, you, don't, you don't know where I've been. You don't know the horrific places I've been. How can, how can God love me? How can God forgive me? What, what, what would it take for him to love someone like me? You really don't know what I've done. Reality is it doesn't matter what you've done. You could have been the vilest sinner or you could have maybe only committed one sin. The Bible tells us that when we've sinned, it separated us from God. But the reality is that the blood of Jesus Christ is enough. Amen. It Amen. is enough. No matter what you've done, I don't care if you were the vilest sinner, the blood Amen. of Jesus makes you clean. Amen. And it doesn't matter what it is. You could have had a thousand affairs. You could have robbed a million banks. You could have killed 2,000 people. One drop of the blood of Jesus is enough to set the vile sinner free. Amen. So the question that I would ask, if you're asking me, can God forgive me? The question I need to ask you, is the blood of Jesus enough to forgive you? Amen. And the answer is yes. Amen. That's, Amen. The, that's what I was looking for. The blood. See, there's a value on the blood of the Son of God. It is, the, it is, it is God's most precious, precious asset yes. that he handed to you and I for the remission of our sins. And I would say to the person that is dealing with this awful load of guilt that Jesus Christ paid the price for your sin. No matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, yes. Jesus Christ loves you and gave himself to forgive to, to uh, I guess you would say, eradicate. Now, let's, let's talk about a, a few verses. What happens as far as the Word of God is concerned? Uh, does God choose, Brother Jamie, to forget these sins? Does, uh, what, what, do, does he just forget about them? I mean, what's going on there? Well, when we think about them, well, let's go to a verse of Scripture in Isaiah uh, 43 and verse number 25 the scripture uh, says I even I am he that blotteth out thy transgressions for mine own sake and will not remember thy sins now when we think about that verse I mean this is God talking God is saying I even I and he comes down in the latter part of that verse, or the last part of it, he says, and will not remember thy sins. This is, we know that God is omniscient, Brother Jim. So we know that God in his intelligence cannot forget. I mean, in the sense of who he is, in his character. He cannot forget anything because he knows everything. But what the Bible is saying here is this, to, to help us understand it, is, is God is saying, I won't bring it up anymore. I won't, I won't come back to you and bring it up. If that sin or certain sins are being brought up in your, this is very, very important right here. If certain sins, besetting sins, are, are coming up in your life, 
you can rest assured it's the accuser of the brethren. It's the devil uh, coming to you, bringing your sin up. If God saved you and freed you from that sin, then he will not bring it up again. Amen. And uh, so God has made a choice. Yes, he has. He's made a choice not to come back and bring it up uh, in front of us anymore. So it's gone as far as God is concerned. Amen. I'm reminded of Psalm 103, uh, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Uh, one commentator wrote that it is impossible to bring east and west together. It's impossible to do that. So it is impossible to bring the forgiven sinner and his or her sins back together. That's right. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I want to ask you guys this concerning forgiveness. And it's wonderful. We, we, we've touched lightly on the great subject of forgiveness in God's grace. And we talk about how wonderful God's grace is. And, and how, how his love and mercy. But I want to ask another question. And uh, I'll point this to you, Brother Eric. Does, uh, does grace and our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ and his, his mighty forgiving and even the blood being applied to our hearts and lives, uh, does that give the believer license to sin? The scripture says, God forbid. Amen. <laughs> it doesn't give us a license, absolutely not. God's grace is definitely sufficient. And I think that's the difference between someone who truly has a relationship and someone who is just trying to cry off their, their guilt or their shame. When you have a relationship, it's like a child. When you have a relationship, that child wants to please their father. They want to please their parent. Absolutely. They're going to do everything within their power to you know, make daddy proud, if you will use that term my mama proud um, so it is the same with us as as children of God if we're really in a relationship with him and we really love him the way we say we do I don't want to mess up I, I, I don't want to sin against him I don't want to do anything that's going to cause him you know any shame to who he is or anything about that but his grace is definitely sufficient I do come to the realization though that <laughs> God is able to just to, to pardon me and forgive. Uh, my mind goes to a little kid. We got several of them at church, and they're little bitty babies, and I have had the privilege of watching them learn to walk. It's phenomenal. The first, I've caught two babies. The parents didn't even get to see it, and I've seen it before them, and they got upset. But the reality is I'd watch them, and, man, they'd take those first steps, and they were, boom, and they would fall. Did the parents scream and yell at them? No. Uh, what do you Come on, you can do this. They applauded. Come on, one more step, one more step, and they would fall. They would be clumsy. I believe with God in his mercy, he loves us so much that he expects that sometimes we're going to fall. And that's why he's, he's made a way. He's, he is our grace. He is sufficient. But it, I believe in heaven, God is champion with the sun, and he is cheering us on saying, come on, baby, you can do this. You can make it. Come on, yeah. keep stepping. One more step, one more day. And when we fall, come on, get back up. I've paid the price for your fall. Come on, you can do this. Keep coming. Amen. And God loves us so much, man. He just... He's not sitting there like some big bully with a magnifying glass looking who he can strike down. Micah says, who is like our God? There is no one like him. He is the great I am. Amen. And he is championing us and loving on us so much. Amen. And he's caring for us. So, you know, the reality is, Jeff, he loves us enough that his grace is sufficient. The question really becomes, do you love him? Right. Amen. That's good. We, we see and, and understand through Scripture that when you and I, we ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into our hearts by faith. Yes. And we, we believe that as the scripture says that we actually are baptized into his death. Yes. Uh, the Bible says, and you, you mentioned it uh, in your uh, uh, quote, God forbid. In Romans chapter 6, starting at verse number 1, the Bible says, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? And then there's that, that famous saying, God forbid, forbid, or 
away with the thought. Yes. And then the scripture goes on to say this. How shall we who are dead to sin? Now, what does that mean? What, how shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? The scripture here is telling you and I that when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, in the eyes of God, we were baptized into Christ's death. In other words, when Christ died, in the eyes of God, we died. In other words, Jeff, the old man Jeff, was crucified. Even though our Lord did it, Jeff gets to take part through my faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Jeff gets to take part in it. And I have, in other words, in the eyes of God, the Lord Jesus Christ paying my sin debt, the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ is imputed to me. The Bible says in Romans chapter 6 verse 3, do you not know or don't you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ, this is not speaking of water baptism, this is the moment of belief. And this is one of the things, uh, gentlemen, this thought comes into my mind. This is one of the, the great things about being saved. The Bible tells us in a little later down in the chapter, verse 14 in Romans chapter 6, that sin shall not, or the sin nature shall not have dominion over me. And here's one of, one of the things that is so fantastic about realizing that I am baptized into Christ's death, I'm buried with him, and I'm raised in newness of life, is that the, is that the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of my heart and life at the moment of conception, it is actually the born again experience where the Holy Spirit does a regenerative, regenerated work in my heart and life. And Brother Eric, you alluded to it a second ago and it excites me to know that uh, number one, a newborn believer, a new, a new creature in Christ wants to please the Father. Wants, we want to please our Heavenly Father. But yet, as Brother Eric said, he has not stacked the deck against us, so to speak. He has given us the Holy Spirit inside of us, number one, number one, to convict us of sin. Yes. And number two, he's also given us the Holy Spirit to help us to be a comforter to us even if and when temptation comes along. I, I know that many of you know uh, many of you know that we have a daughter uh, that's in a uh, federal prison system, and we're going to have a, uh, uh, a segment on that at, at a later time. But she's in a federal uh, prison system for five years uh, for, for a drug charge, and uh, the, she's doing great. Just give you a quick heads up on that. She's doing great following the Lord inside, inside the prison. But as far as the prison system, and this is what I'm trying to say, gentlemen, as far as the prison system is concerned, they are trying to deal with the deeds of sin. Just the state system is trying to deal with deeds, the broken law. The, the local jails, they're dealing with deeds, the broken law, the deeds of sin. But once we are born again, and we place our faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit helps us to deal with the desire. See, we have, a, we have a, a penal system out there, again, that is dealing with the, the deeds of breaking the law. But once I was born again, I have a Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Godhead, yeah. the one and only living God living inside of me that helps helps me to deal with the desires of sin so that I do not commit the deeds of sin. So some might say, you, you mean to tell me, Brother Jeff, that there is power uh, for the believer to have uh, when it comes to temptation. Uh, Brother Jamie, uh, am, are we on the right track here as far as the cross is concerned and the power of the Holy Spirit? No doubt, but you're on the right track, Brother Jeff. Uh, I was, I've been, the verse comes to mind uh, 
which is really, a, again, I'm using that word tonight, foundational quite a bit, but uh, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. That's Romans 8, 2. And uh, that's exactly what you're talking about in comparison to the penal system and to the grace of God. Thank God for grace. Amen. The grace of God is, is what gives us... It, grace is more than an unmerited favor. Grace is the power to do as you should. Amen. In fact... Yes. It gives the grace of God uh, in us, if so be that we have tasted of His grace, uh, really gives us the desire or desires to do that which is right in the sight of God. Yeah. Whereas we did not have that. We were, we were lost. We were dead in trespasses and in sins. Yes. We didn't have a heart or a mind toward God. But when God's grace came, uh, the grace of God enables us on a daily basis to want to do that which is right. In fact, uh, a verse of scripture that has been on my heart throughout the day uh, in preparation for us being here tonight is, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. And he also, the scripture here says, and grieve not the Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness uh, if, if we are living in, I mean outright, <clears throat> I mean blatant sin, open sin, and I know what that is. I understand that. I, I know what it's like to, to, to live a life that is in a guilty distance from God. But I also, thank God, know what it's like to be brought back into the fellowship of the Lord Jesus Christ as well. And if, I will say this, if God ever saved you, if you're in the family, if you're part of God's family tonight, I will say this, that you will never be satisfied going back to that old life. The old flesh pots of the world never satisfy. Yes. They never give you what, you what you really want and the desire of your heart. And so, again, if we're grieving the Holy Spirit of God, we're causing Him pain. I mean, He lives in us, brother. As he lives in us, I, that's one thing you don't want to do. You don't want to violate. And as, as I've grown in the Lord over the years, uh, you don't want to violate that intimacy to where you can hear the voice of God. Yes. The Spirit of God is our teacher. He's the one that brings us into a closer, right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, on a daily basis. That This is, this is what, I mean, when we talk of forgiveness... We're talking about a perpetual, ongoing work of God's grace in us. Not just justified, but being sanctified daily. Walking in the light. If we're not walking in the light, we're not fellowshipping with God. Amen, Brother Eric. I think we... <clears throat> sin is like a cancer. You know, it, it comes in and man, it just starts messing up with the functions of the body. It'll, it'll eat at you and it'll do things to you. And the antidote for that sin is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, just like when we go to the doctor and the doctor gives the antidote to us, the work of grace is a pro progressive work. You're, it will take a little bit of time. I think I, I get a little worried that sometimes somebody will become a Christian and man, they give their heart to the Lord and they're zealous. And then that sin nature of what was pops back up and they're like, well, just forget it. I can't, I can't do this. Yeah. And they need to understand that Paul, when he was writing to the Galatians, said that we need to crucify our flesh. And, you know, the crucifixion at that time period when Paul was writing was one of the worst instruments of death and still is. It was a point to just being ripped apart and bled out and, and it was horrible. So when he's saying that we have to crucify our flesh, we need to be mindful that sometimes this is a painful process that going through this, even though the blood's been applied and we're saved and the sanctification process of eradicating our, our life from that sin, you'll still have those people that'll call you and say, hey buddy, you want to go get that part? I'm going to just sure, be real. Sure. You want to go get that hit one more time. Right. And you got to have that in you enough, that crucifixion of the flesh to say, no, I'm not doing that. Amen, the world today is so inundated with pornography and these other things that Man, it, that sin nature is going to keep attacking, but we got to have our defenses up, and we got to crucify that flesh daily 
to say, I'm not going to partake in this thing. And, and the more you do that, the more that sin nature will decrease and decrease and God will increase. The scripture says, you know, I must decrease that he can increase. And that's, that helps so much because as a new Christian, Jeff, I thought as a new Christian, man, I'm saved. I'm ready to go. There's nothing else. And then I started realizing this old stuff would pop back up and I would fall. And I thought, well, does God not love me the way he loves Pastor Jeff? Or does God not love me the way he loves sister so-and-so? Because I seem to be struggling and all these church folks look great. And I, could, and I couldn't grasp it until I started reading the Revelation. Outside. Yeah, on the outside. They were eat up with sin on the inside. Yeah. But I started realizing that I have to crucify this flesh because this flesh wants things that ain't right. And when I did that, I started to learn the forgiveness not only of, of God that he forgave me, but I started to learn the forgiveness of myself to forgive what I had done to me. And there's a peace that comes when you learn to forgive yourself. Amen. Amen. That's good. Okay. He, he mentioned, Brother Eric mentioned a, a phrase, crucifying the flesh. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I know this is not the, the subject for tonight, but I believe it'd be worth taking just a few moments. I, for years, Brother Eric, and I grew up in church, um, and I was told to crucify the flesh. Right. I was told what not to do uh, I just wasn't told in a very good way that I could understand it how to do that yeah. and when I would when I would hear the phrase crucify the flesh or, 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 or walk away from the things of the world and be come out from among, among them be separate yeah. saith the Lord and, that, and, and I found that in my Christian experience that I would try to do that and I would try to crucify the flesh within the confines of my own strength. Can't do it. And I would always fail. I would try to crucify the flesh through pure willpower. Now I understand that, that willpower uh, does play a part, but willpower is not Christianity. Yeah, willpower will not always allow you to crucify the flesh. Right. And one of the things that the Lord um, has, has been so gracious to show me over the years, there is one way and one way alone for Jeff to crucify his flesh. I cannot crucify the flesh by not watching TV. I can't crucify the fle flesh by doing this or doing that. I crucify the flesh, my flesh, my desires, when I place my faith 110% in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ, when I place my faith in him and his finished work, the works of my flesh and the works of my Christianity goes out the door. Right. And, the, and the Lord is able to do inside of me through the person and work of the Holy Spirit that I cannot do. So I guess if somebody would be listening, Brother Jamie, I'll let you comment on this. If someone was listening uh, tonight and they're saying, Brother Jamie, I've tried. I've tried. I've tried. I've tried to crucify the flesh. I've tried to, I've tried to get over this hump. But I always find myself failing. What would you say? Well, we need to understand that when Jesus died on the cross, he not only died for me, but he died as me. He took me with him in death. Yes. If you go to Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20, I am crucified with Christ. Now listen to the verse. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Amen. And the life which I now presently live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And I do not frustrate. See, here, here we need to go on to the next verse. And I do not frustrate the grace of God. Right. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And I want to tell you, he did not die in vain, friend. Amen. I mean, he entered in once into the holy place. He died once and for all. He obtained eternal redemption for us. But when he died, 
again. He took us with him in death. Yeah. He died as me. The death that I deserved, he took upon himself. Right. I deserved it. And yet, on the other hand, if here's in order for us to really understand uh, this thing of crucifixion of the flesh, what we must do is appropriate by faith what Christ has done. We, we don't have the power to, to try and crucify our flesh. That's not in us. Our, our sin nature, that sin nature that's in us, brother, is just not going to be for that. And so what we have to do is agree with what Christ has done. Right. That's it. It's no works on our part. He did it all. Yes. Jesus paid it all for it. I mean, we don't have to work for it. He's already worked. He's done it. And so since it's done, I just agree with what he has done. And in doing that, Galatians 5, 24 says, They that are Christ, our, our brother mentioned it a few minutes ago, have crucified uh, the flesh with the affections and lust. I mean, it's already done. We just need to accept it. It's not something that we, again, right. I can't overemphasize this. It's not something we do. It's something he has done, Brother Jeff. Amen. And so we appropriate that by faith in him. We appropriate his finished work. Yes. Working in and through us. Via the Holy Spirit by our faith. In that's that's yes. it. Is that it? <laughs> you nailed it. Amen. That's it. Amen. What do you think, Brother Eric? That's it. I mean, that that's it. I didn't want somebody to walk away and think, man, I've tried it and, and I just can't do it because literally you can't. You just have to accept that he paid the price. He he has become that sin offering. He took, he took our place on the cross. He became us, as you said, and that through that we have the forgiveness of our sin. And once we realize that we're forgiven, Man, your world changes. It, when you're set free, you're free. Amen. Praise the Lord. We've just got just a, well, just a few minutes left. And I want to deal with a, a scripture. And again, we're probably going to run out of time. But I want to deal with a third point. And I want to read some scripture. And this would be, we're still on the subject of forgiveness. But this is the concerning a, a brother or sister in Christ that has fail the Lord and I, I, I know that there are people uh, in that are in in the public arena's eyes Christians over the years that have had failures in their life and it seems like that we as Christians we will take someone especially someone maybe that has been set upon a pedestal uh, perhaps a preacher or a pastor and uh, maybe there's been a great, great failure in their life. And we have taken that person and it, it, it can actually come down to uh, even people within our own fellowship yeah. and people in our own churches. And, and, and maybe they've committed a horrific sin. And we, 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 for some reason, because we have not committed that particular sin, for some reason, and, and I'm assuming that it is my pride, yeah. and I'm assuming that it is my flesh that puffs up in me to somehow, I may not say it, but to somehow maybe give the idea that I'm a little more righteous than that brother or sister that has failed. And, and this, is the, this is the scripture that I want to read out of, and I want to ask you guys a question, and keep in mind we're running out of time. The Bible says in Galatians chapter 6, it says, Brethren, <coughs> if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, and I want to deal with that in just a moment, ye which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself lest ye all so be tempted now we're with the, with the with the coming coming down to the conclusion of tonight's broadcast on forgiveness what brother eric and i'll pose the question to you it says ye which are spiritual restore such a one what does that mean it's simply we 
instead of putting somebody down, you lift them up. You don't press, you know, you don't, of course you have to acknowledge that they're, that what they've done, you know, they have to confess and repent. And once they've done that, then we should, as the ones who are spiritual, the leaders, we should come along and encourage them, help heal them, just like a nurse would or anything. The reality is I'm one, you know, sent away from being where they are. And I need to make sure that I'm not putting anybody else down. Luke 6 and 37 says, don't judge and you won't be judged. Don't condemn and you won't be condemned. So it's not my job. I am not the judge. Thank God I'm not the judge that has to judge these folks. And, I, and I'm not condemning anybody because I've walked in some dark and dirty places. And so I'm not going to put these things. And I just know that if I don't judge and I don't condemn, I will be forgiven and I'll just help restore them, pick them up as a doctor or a nurse would. A, a doctor looks at you and says, you got cancer. He's not judging you. He's just pointing out what it is. And he's going to do everything within his power to get you well. And that's Amen. what we are to do. Amen. 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 Brother Jamie, tell me what it means to, to you which are spiritual, restore such a one. Well, when any, any of us... And, and I, I want to kind of just pick up where Brother Eric has has left off. Any of us are susceptible to to falling yeah. at, at any point in time. And when we see a brother or a sister fall or whatever it is, if maybe not just a specific sin, maybe they're uh, they're well. When we see a person overtaken in a fall, they're obviously continuing in that sin. And so it, it should be in our hearts to be humble enough to go to that person in love, not, not uh, as, as, as we have already mentioned, not with a spirit of condemnation. None of us are more spiritual than the other. Only, only God can, can really do the work, and we need to allow the Spirit of God. If I've got sin in my life, and I'm, I'm, I'm just wallowing in it myself, then I have dammed up inside of me the flow or the stream of God's mercy. And so it's when I realize that I'm just as bad off as they are or, I, or I'm susceptible as being that, that in that particular state. I have to have enough grace and enough love. The next verse says, in fact, bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, which is the law of love. Yes. I mean, we've got to love one another enough to pick each other up, to hold each other's arms up. I'm telling you, in this time that we're in right now, this is where we need to be living, Amen. to where we're picking each other up in the last, and I'm going to say it, I think we're in the last of the last of the last days. Yeah. Jesus could come at any moment. And we know tonight that when things happen like this, 9-11, we can go back, swine flu, we can go back to all these different things and, 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 and allude to, well, we said that then, but I want to tell you, it's right now is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. And for the believer, tonight, if you're struggling with some kind of besetting sin, let me say to you, still away uh, and, and allow God to work and allow the Holy Spirit to comfort you, to, to bring you to the place of the cross where you realize, get a, get a fresh glimpse tonight yes. of Calvary. Look to Jesus in these moments. Amen. We don't know. You don't know that you've had the next day. You don't know that you're going to live throughout the rest of this night. I want to tell you, I do not want to stand before God and, and have known sin that I could have dealt with in my life before leaving this world. Jesus could could call or come at any moment. So we got to trust him, Brother Jeff. Amen. 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 I'm going to go ahead and pray, if that's all right. And uh, friend, the Lord Jesus Christ loves you. Yes. The Savior himself, Hallelujah. he loves you. The Savior's cross proves it yes. to you. Amen. And as our brothers, and I appreciate you gentlemen, and, and I, it seemed like the hour goes by <laughs> real, real quick. Um, pray for us that we'll be able to continue uh, to do God's will and that, that the Lord will continue to grow the broadcast yes. and, and to give us what he would have us to have. And uh, if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ tonight, Amen. 
you can accept him as your Savior. Yes. And if you do know him tonight yes. and you are, are tangled up or in bondage to, to some kind of sin, whatever it may be, you may be in the church. Yes. You may be on a church pew and you may be dealing with something in your life. Well, I want to tell you tonight, friend, Jesus Christ, yes, he went to Calvary's cross to set you free. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear yes. Heavenly Father, thank yes. you so much for your mercy and your grace. Yes. Lord, thank you for what you're doing, Lord, in these days. Lord, you're still the same today as you was yesterday. Yes. Lord, we're looking, Lord, for, for days to come, Lord, in the very near future, Lord, there, for you to do mighty, mighty yes. things, Lord, in the body, uh, your body, the church. Lord, I pray, Lord, that uh, the church will not only repent, but a, the church will gain a, a spirit of repentance in their Amen. lives and in their hearts. Lord, we love you for what you've done. Lord, and bring us back again at the next broadcast. We love you. See you next time. Amen. Thank you much.